Hello, I'm Jay, owner of Volunteer Audio in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. We've had some requests about the new RG3. So today I've got this beautiful 2023 Road Glide 3 and I'm gonna show you how to make the audio sound as good as this bike looks. This video is brought to you by VolunteerAudio.com, your number one source for all things Harley-Davidson audio, from individual radios, speakers, and amps, to complete plug-and-play amp and speaker systems, we've got you covered. And once you've ordered your package from Volunteer Audio, it includes lifetime tech support, and we have the very best step-by-step -step installation video, so you can install it yourself and save money. All right, so new for 2023. Some of you, this may be new to you as well. You don't see these much in the dealership yet. This is Harley's new three-wheel platform. They're calling it a freewheeler. It's a more sportier, stripped-down, kind of lighter weight option, and they're offering it with this beautiful road glide front end. The market's kind of shifted. We see a lot of you guys are buying road glides. Think about it. Even Traveling Tall bought a road glide. So they're hot right now. And this bike is awesome, but it's got a few limitations. I want to show you the rear trunk opens upward instead of outward like a normal triglide or, or up like a normal triglide. So there's no way to put a tour pack. There are no bags or areas to put lid speakers in the back. So we're kind of stuck with front only audio in this case, but no worries. You might want to add a sub back here, but there's not enough storage for a sub, but we're going to get plenty of sound with our Hertz stage four in the front of this fairing. So it's got the factory GTS radio and Mike's decided he wants to keep it. So we're going to flash it correcting that terrible factory EQ curve but we're gonna add a set of lowers. They're gonna be ported with some SV Hertz speakers to give us good mid bass. We're gonna do some SX coaxials in the front to give us crisp highs and that clarity. And we're gonna use that huge Hertz SP4.900. 1000 watt RMS, 2000 watt peak amp. So we're pretty much gonna make his ears bleed as he goes down the road. But he's got volume control, so he'll still get that clarity and that awesome sound. Let's move over to the table. I'm gonna show you all the components we're gonna put in and just how easy these plug and play packages from Volunteer Audio are. All right, so I want to take a second and we'll go over each component and why we chose them for this bike. First off, we got to power these speakers. We're going to need a lot of volume because I know Mike, he's going to do some upgrades. He's already put tab exhaust on it. It's very loud, and that's not going to be the end of it. So we've got to get the audio where it's louder than the engine and it's louder than the wind. And we're going to power that with that Hertz SP4.900. Now, this isn't just an amplifier because this is part of the plug and play package from Volunteer Audio. It's the amp pre-mounted to that road glide plate so it's gonna mount in this fairing under the radio behind the headlight, but it's also completely pre-wired into this plug and play harness. So this is gonna simply plug in behind the radio and power everything we need. It's also gonna come with the correct eight gauge copper wire already pre-made, pre, -made, pre uh, ring terminals are on it, fuse holders on it, and the plugs on it just to plug into the amp to make this install very, very simple. And as you watch the highlights of this, you'll see just how easy it is. Now he bought Advan Black lowers and we're not uh, anti-Advan Black, but their speaker provisions normally don't sound great. So we're going to go with a different provision that actually seals it up and ports it to give us better mid-bass out of the bottom. These are made by Metro Saddle Tramp. They're available on our website at volunteeraudio.com as well. In the front, we're going to go to the Hertz SX165neo. This is one of our favorite speakers. The clarity, the clearness, how musical they are, they're just awesome speakers. But that tweeter is bright enough that we don't need two sets of those in the front. So in the lowers, we're going to put the SV165 mid bass. That's going to give us better mids, better vocals, and a little of that low end bass that we're not going to get from the upper. I'm going to finish it off with a nice new set of grills in those lowers, making it look good. Watch this. It's going to, we're going to make it look really easy, and it's really not going to be that hard. And check out the new RG3 section at volunteeraudio.com to see all the available packages we're going to have for these new bikes.
we're making really good time. Robbie's already got the amp in place, the radio's back in. We got our lowers disassembled, ready to put our pods on our lowers. But Robbie's still got our upper speaker pods out. And I want to take a second. I want to show you these factory speakers and just why it's so important that we upgrade our audio. Because these speakers, as you can tell, there's not much to them. I think this is the cheapest built speaker of any vehicle we work on. Uh, and we work on everything. But in, a, in the Harley world, you would expect something a little beefier. But we've got a magnet that doesn't pick up metal. We've got a five and a quarter inch woofer in a six and a half inch basket. So it makes no sense. Why didn't you just make us a speaker a little bigger to give us more surface area? That would have gave us better sound, but not much we could do with this. So we're gonna upgrade to better speakers and this is our replacement for the uppers. And as you'll notice, the cone is significantly big, bigger. It's a true six and a half. The tweeter's larger. The magnet is significantly larger. And on top of that, it's neodymium, which is a rare earth magnet. It's super strong. It's about 40 times stronger than strontium. And it's definitely gonna hold metal where this one won't pick it up at all. So much, much stronger structure, more power handling, more output, larger cone. That's gonna give us a speaker that's good enough to be able to project that sound where we can hear it and handle the power of our new amp. If we tried to amplify these, we just blow them all to pieces. These are gonna fit directly in that stock pod. They're gonna drop right in. So no modification is gonna be required. It's gonna make that install very, very easy. And our six and a half that are going our lowers are the same exact design, except for they're a solid woofer instead of having that tweeter. That's what we're gonna put in those lowers here in just a few minutes as well. All right, so these lowers that are on this bike came from Advan Black. So Advan Black, I do not like their speaker provisions. Nobody send these goofy spacers to try to space the speakers to fit in the inside of their sealed back, very, very small sealed compartments. And between the spacers not allowing the speakers to fit firmly, the grills don't fit right, and the fact it's such a small sealed environment, we lose all of our base. I recommended that Mike not get their speaker provision and that we use this much better one made from Saddle Tramp. And as you'll notice, it comes with this uh, lower section that gives a little more airspace, but it's also ported out the bottom. So we're gonna get a good bass response. But the reason I wanted to talk about these specifically was anytime you're moving your hardware for working those vents and you take those screws out and you put them back in, you want to get some blue Loctite and put on each one of those bolts. If you don't do that riding down the road, you're going to lose this hardware and you're going to reach down. There's not going to be anything holding your vents. So definitely take the time to put Loctite on the bolts, especially on these lowers, because you can't go all the way tight. If you tighten these all the way down, they no longer slide. So it's not like we can put enough torque on them to keep them in place. But I'm going to continue going back together, put this pod back together now that I've got our hardware swapped out and we'll get the speakers in it shortly. So one of the, well, you could do this first or you could do it last, but normally it's one of the last things we do. We're gonna flash the radio. So our speakers are in, our amps in. We've put most of the bike back together. We're gonna do a polarity test after this part before we put our fairing on in case we need to change some speaker wires. But right now I've got my computer, my laptop, it's a PC laptop, connected to a techno research flash tool that's plugged into the data port behind the side cover on our bike. We've got the ignition turned on so we're powered up. And we've already downloaded the software and put it in. And at volunteeraudio.com and also on our YouTube channel, we have links to the step-by-step -step video of exactly how to do this process. But I want to take a second and tell you what we're doing, why we're doing it. So if we're using a factory Harley radio, from the factory, it's got those two terrible speakers that I showed you earlier in the video. Those speakers don't want to play much bass. They don't sound good at all. And to get them to sound the best that they can, Harley uses an EQ that sends more bass to them while it's sitting here not running and takes bass away when it's running. 
we don't like that, we need to fix that. On top of that, they send a really low bass note, about 65 hertz is boosted really high, and that causes these speakers to want to blow, and we don't want to send that signal into our new speakers. So when we flash the stock radio, we turn that EQ off so it doesn't change when running. We also flatten that EQ curve out so we don't have that huge bass boost. Now everybody loves bass. We love the sound of bass and we love the full sound of added bass. But when you go loud enough to hear a six and a half or even a six by nine, when it's loud enough to hear over the engine and the wind at 80 miles an hour plus, if you send that bass to it, it's just going to distort. It's not going to sound good. It's going to be unclear. It's going to sound very muddy and you're going to blow your speakers. So as much as we love bass, we understand those frequencies have to go to a subwoofer or something much, much larger to go that loud. So the flash is going to do multiple things at the same time. It's going to turn on the rear channel, uh, rear speakers if you had a tour pack. Let's say this was a Triglide or it was a Ultra Limited or something that had a factory tour pack or maybe we're just adding rear 6 by 9s and it's never been turned on before. This turns on the rear channels. It also turns the radio down. We're actually turning the output of the radio down to a usable input level on our new amplifier. So our amp will not get clipped on the input side. If you send too much signal into your amp, you're only going to make it so high on volume before that amp sounds bad. So we want to turn the radio down to that point, we want to fix that EQ, and we do all that with one simple process. So we're connected here, our key's on, our radio's powered up, we're going to go down to the six speaker upper, upper lower fairing saddlebag two amp flash. Now we go over the same thing in our step-by-step -step video on how to do this, but by doing this one click, and setting and having this radio pass and become this setting. This is a factory Harley amplified flash. It's going to fix all those problems. Now I will tell you if you ever do a diagnostic run or codes run of the radio, if you do that scan, you're going to see two codes that say that it can't find the factory boom amplifiers because we just told it it had factory boom amps. They're not there. It's never going to turn on a check engine light but it's normal. If you do a scan of the radio, you're going to see those two codes. Do not let your Harley dealer undo that. Don't let them flash it back stock because that's going to undo all the great things we've already did that made it sound good. Now, if this all confuses you and you're like, this is stupid and I don't want to do that, buy the Soundstream radio. It has a lot of features. It's faster. Uh, it sounds so much better and it has an awesome 13 band EQ that we don't have to flash anything to use and it has high pass filters and low pass filters and sub control if we had a sub. I think the Soundstream radio is definitely the best way to get the best sound, but this makes it where we get excellent sound out of the factory radio. We just have to go through this process. And at Volunteer Audio, we rent that tool so you can do it yourself because your Harley dealer, the local Harley dealer, cannot do what we just did. Now, while we're in here, we're gonna also flash on the WIM. Now, the WIM is from Harley, the wireless headset interface module. We don't have one of those on this bike, but by flashing it on, even though it's not there, it's gonna make Apple CarPlay work. So we can do that with this same tool and, I'll, and we're gonna do that while we have it connected. So not only are we fixing the terrible output of the factory radio and, and getting it ready for an amp so it'll sound great, we're also turning on features that it did not have turned on from the factory. Uh, if you buy the Soundstream, the Apple CarPlay is already turned on. So we're gonna finish this up here in a second. I'll be back with you. We'll do a quick polarity test and we'll listen to it and see what it sounds like. All right, so one of the last steps and probably one of the most important, but one of the easiest as well, is to check the polarity of your speakers. So Harley is really bad to be inconsistent in their wiring. So normally when we have rear speakers, we're always testing our tour pack or our lids. But in this case, we're going to check our lowers and make sure that all our speakers are firing the same way. It doesn't matter which way as long as they're all working together. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to go to Volunteer Audio's YouTube channel and we're going to bring up the polarity test track video. We're going to Bluetooth our phone to our radio. We're going to turn it on and then we're going to hit play. When we do that, it's going to give some pops. Pop, pop. Pop. Well, there's going to be three positive and one negative. So you're either going to get three green flashes and a red flash or three red flashes and a green flash. We want to check each speaker and make sure they all have the same reading. Let's get this one going. All right, so we've got three red and a green on our lower.
Three red and a green on that upper. We're going to check the additional other two. Check our lower. All right, so good news is all of our speakers, they all match. They were all three reds and a green. Now I'll tell you, depending on when you turn on this track or what device you're using or what browser you're using when you listen to it, it actually changes the way these come through the speakers. So every time you do this, test all your speakers and just make sure they match. If they're all three red and a green, that doesn't mean you need to pull every speaker out and change them. It just means that they're all working together. So don't get confused with that. If one speaker is opposite from the other speakers and you don't fix it, you're not going to have mid-bass. You're not going to have full sound and it's not going to, it's not going to have the presence and the, and the warmth to the sound that it should have. So any of them that are out, you need to change and fix. Once you've got that fixed, retest the whole system and you're going to find out that it sounds a whole lot better when you listen to your music. This is important no matter where you got your system from. This isn't just if you bought it from Volunteer Audio. This is if you bought a Rockford system, if you have a factory system, if you bought it and had it installed at a shop somewhere, test this. You're going to find out more times than not that something is backwards, and when you fix it, it's going to make your system sound a whole lot better. So now we'll play a quick track. Let's bring up a copyright-free track, and we'll see what it sounds like. And I hope, you know, we're not always guaranteed that weather cooperates, but when the owner of the bike picks it up, I hope to do a quick walk away, maybe talk with him, and let you see what he thinks about it uh, as well. So. you probably couldn't hardly hear me talk at all while it was playing and I know Mike's gonna be tickled he's gonna be able to hear it crystal clear no matter how fast he's going down the highway no matter what kind of exhaust he's put on it no matter what kind of engine builds he ends up doing it's gonna sound great no matter what speed all right so hopefully when he comes we'll be able to shoot a little bit more footage and share that with you as well all right so the weather has worked out it's beautiful outside we're gonna do a quick walk away with this RG3 before it leaves and goes to its home so let me get some music fired up and we'll do a walk away. All right, so let's get this thing powered up. Let's get us, get us something playing here and let's do a quick walk away. <laughs> Thank you. 